Alright, Magnus, right, so he should be okay with Skewer, but if you do hit the combo with the arrow and the disruption, then there's a good chance he will die. It so Moscow 5, I have to find something here in this last pick that really, I think, impresses me and, and hopefully kind of rhymes out their lineup in a good way. Because at this point, Virtus Pro are going to destroy the laning phase, as, you, as you've talked about. So Yeah, and we should mention, by the way, that, that Jotham is uh, really shown himself to be one of the best support Marana players here in the last couple of yes. months. He has 24 games on Marana. Marana since uh, TI4, and he is 18 and 6 on that hero. So just incredibly impactful in the early game with those arrows, and very, very good in his positioning throughout the mid game. Obviously, with Marana, people talk about that arrow all day and all night, and that does define the hero. But she's certainly a hero that that can do a lot of damage with her skill set through good team fight positioning, uh, and he is as good on that hero as there is right now out there. Interesting to me that the terrible by the Ten way, seconds. made it all the I'm way to the that. last ban. Uh, that sure would have been a good pickup for Five M5 seconds. and a very smart I'm ban coming out from BP. Oh, wow. Yay. That's Throwback cool. time, boys. This is a hero, by the way, that if I'm remembering correctly, Blow Your Brain still actually has the career wins record on. Uh, he is phenomenal as Chaos Knight. Ran a lot of this. Yeah, he is 33-8 and eight career on his hero. That's the most wins on the hero of any pro player. Uh, ran this when he was a part of Empire back in the day and was just magnificent on this hero. One of the few that I saw have a lot of success on this hero without the IO. So, you know, really trying to bring something back here. And remember, Chaos Knight did get a significant buff in terms of his Phantasm duration in 6.82. Now, the thing, though, is that seconds. you go late Remaining. enough and the Chaos Knight can absolutely destroy you, but early in the game, I don't know how much it's been not late. You have. Now, it, so don't don't sleep Chaos Knight 30 minute Mario. Chaos Knight is not necessarily a late game carry. Chaos Knight is really, really good at 25 to 30 minutes. The big problem with a CK is that if he falls behind in farm, yeah. he's screwed. He's a very level dependent hero. He's a very farm dependent hero in the mid game. Now, when you get to 30, 35, 40 minutes, he can hold his own against a lot of agility carries with a lot less farm. The problem is that if he falls behind at 10 or 15 minutes, there's no flash farm mechanic. There's really no good way for him to catch up. So, I mean, to me, this puts even more pressure on the laning phase for M5, which is something that we yeah, were worried and, and about I don't to begin think with. that they're gonna have enough of a presence early on in the laning phase to get him the farm that he needs yeah, and, and and he not only needs maybe farm but he can benefit from some kills as well for moscow five and i don't just i really don't see that happening with the lineup that virtus pro have i'm in the last pick to tide hunter this guy's one of the hardest heroes to kill especially because if you're going to get close with blow your brain he's just going to anchor smash you and then all of your damage is going to be gone but no i yeah. agree with you i mean like you get to the you know 30 minute mark for blow your brain he's going to have enough items to be a force a driving factor if he gets a good start and a good start for me is just him not dying and him securing at least enough farm to get maybe treads, maybe a bracer. If he wants an armlet, he certainly can go for that, but probably an early BKB, early drum, which you pretty much have to go on that hero. Um, well, then but again, we don't know what, uh, what they're going to build. We haven't really seen CK in a while, so... But this is pretty. Look, let's let's be honest here. Okay, this is this is pretty par for the course for M5. They, if you look at their stats over the last couple of months, uh, they pretty much have been Team Vigas, and Vigas has really played some magnificent games, uh, including a couple on a mid wind runner, which uh, you don't see uh, still that often. Uh, and he's been really really great on that hero. But the rest of the team has just been so up and down around him, uh, in particular. Uh, some of their other players. Blow Your Brain has been not so bad, although they've they've gone into the late game uh, in a lot of cases uh, with their backs against it. So your carry player isn't necessarily going to have the greatest of stats. But uh, TPOH on his off lanes has just been really up and down. Uh, their support duo hasn't shown the kind of consistency, especially from PGG, that you'd really like to see from a veteran player. So, I mean, to me, the, the pressure is really on... It, it, it's on the... Th they're three through fives to me to have a good early game and try and make some space because Vigas, if you give him a chance, is going to make some plays for you. But we really haven't necessarily seen the kind of consistency out of the rest of the team that's necessary for them to beat a very talented VP roster. Yeah, and, and I do kind of work for Moscow 5. This is the first game for both squads here in the Dota Pit League, and, and I think that both teams want to get off to a good start. 
Um, and if they if M5 can tie the series, if they can split it 1-1, honestly, I think that's a, that's a victory for them. Because Virtus Pro, this is, a, this is a team that is extraordinarily good, I think, and and one of the most underrated teams. And, and if you look at the CIS yeah. teams, I think it's one of the best. But I, I completely agree. And the, the problem is they have played some brutal competition over the last couple of months. So it doesn't necessarily show up in their stats. I believe they finished, uh, they finished September 19 and 19. But, I mean, this is a team that played in all the big leagues. They played, not, they played the Navis, the Alliances. They played the C9s. I mean, these guys have played up against the best. And they've... I mean, they've given it some really good games, even in their losses. G has just been magnificent for this team. And he's a player that I always felt like was just terrific in terms of his individual talent level. But yes. his consistency was really uh, very lacking at times. And I feel like Cedoy and Jotham, which they added to their roster, have just done so much for him in terms of taking off a little of the pressure. And, of course, also Yol. Uh, they've just been the steadying presences that have really helped G to be able to recover from those occasional bad early laning phases and still have the impact that you want from your mid. You talk about G, you see some of his plays, especially when he plays his Invoker specifically. Oh, goodness. I, I mean, he can also farm really effectively well on other heroes like a Naga, but I, I feel like G's Invoker is absolutely outstanding. And yeah, I mean, he maybe has some consistency issues, but when I watch him, 90% uh, of the time, he impresses the heck out of oh, me yeah. with his play oh, style. Yeah. So, you know, Virtus Pro, they have to get G started here. They got to get him on a farm, get him towards that level two ultimate. Early Yule Scepter is going to be key, I think, for Virtus Pro. And if they can get him snowballing here in this game, maybe even a couple of kills, all of a sudden Virtus Pro are going to have a great time. And with Yule on the Shadow Demon, with Jotam on Marana, they have a very good chance of getting some early pickoffs and some early kills. And Moscow 5 have to be aware of that roaming duo. But they are going to be up top for the time being. And we'll see if they put any pressure here on this trial coming out from N5. Yeah, I, I think that's the other problem i guess with m5's draft is that uh with the last pick chaos night with him being so early game dependent uh you really kind of force yourself into a defensive trial lane and, and that's not so bad because you know it was pretty transparent how vp were going to lane this if you've been watching them this is generally what they're going to do when they open with the viper and the death prophet but still uh king r is going to get up first blood here goodness oh god gets disrupted gets Aaron as well i believe just a nice kill coming out y'all that's why you don't go for the top rune spot uh, yeah so, i mean you just got to be careful man that's that's not the play that you're looking for. So they get they get caught out. And that's that's before even the double zero mark comes out. They find their first kill, and that's really not how you want to give Virtus Pro the start here. That's really just that's and, a problem. And yeah, and they can now. I I like what Yol and Jonam are doing. They're basically going to say, okay, we're going to camp up here, and we're going to harass the hell out of your Chaos Knight, and we might go down and gank your mid. But for them, if they can shut down this CK in the laning phase, oh my goodness! And look look at look at King R. I mean, he's scared to even walk between his tier two and tier one towers. I would be if I was him as well. Uh, I mean, yeah, with good reason. Right? Out. Yeah, you have the illusions coming through. They have an understanding. The problem is there's no wards here from the dire side. M5 have they have only one ward and it's in the lane and that doesn't give them vision of all this aggressive play coming out from Yol and for from Yol and Jotham and and they don't have a ward on the top rune spot as well so they won't know if Vegas is getting ganked or not and he has to kind of be careful he's gonna head down to the bottom rune spot for whatever reason yeah, I think he realizes oh, no. he might be getting roamed on so uh yeah they're gonna get they're gonna get probably at least the courier here and maybe even Vegas as well and this could be devastating because Magnus if Magnus can't bottle crawl yeah he's screwed He's gonna, they have no leap. He's trying to get their job. I'm looking oh, for Oh, he freeze. skilled Arrow. Arrow's going to go through. It does connect on oh Vigas. Oh, my he God. Arrow as you... well. Is he going to die to this? He's going to skewer away. He will make it out in time with about oh. 5 HP left pretty much, it seems like. They do lose the courier. He does get the bottle, though, at the very least. So Wow. Did he drop the bottle off the courier there? I think he just got it to him, and then he, he sent it back. He sent the okay. courier back okay. home. I'm not sure why, but... Still, that that would have been that is so fortunate because Magnus without a bottle. I mean, you saw he started two branches and two share tangos to get that bottle up early. You know, Mag Magnus without an early bottle against Death Prophet and Lane is just it's a disaster beyond it's disasters. Possible, yeah. I mean, he's already losing pretty handedly. 14 last hits for G, 5 for Tratata. The Invisory oh saves God. his life. The last right click from G almost gets the kill. He's still going to 10. He cancels a bottle charge. And now Vegas is out of bottle charges. 
Meanwhile, they're heading bottom. Tron might get caught out here as the Bat Rider is sitting in the jungle, the trees, but he's fine. But Virtus Pro with some early pressure have really, they're, they're going to town. And now Tron's going to get caught out. No, Firefly goes and he stays alive. Oh my god, I mean, Vigas, like, he practically is going to have to go back to base, which, which in this current meta is, is just disastrous. G is destroying this lane. He's a yeah. level up on the Magnus right now, and that's yeah. saying something. He didn't even go back. He's just, he's out leveling, out farming. He's just destroying Vigas in this mid lane. And meanwhile, bottom lane, you're not getting anything for Tron. He's level 3, which is nice, but... Farm-wise, he's not getting much. Tidehunter's level 3 as well, so Sidoi is doing fine. He's actually got more assets than the Batrider does. And, uh, of course, we talked about G already, so... Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. Oh, boy. Vigas is what? dead. What? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing there, Vigas? He just got... It, it was just... It's as simple as that. He just got low and, and didn't go back to base. And, and he eventually was going to give up a kill, and... I mean, I understand that you feel a lot of pressure to stay in lane. You're already behind, and you don't want to fall further behind, but but giving up a kill is even worse. It's a damn disaster coming out from Moscow Live right now. The only thing they have going their way is their top lane, and Blow Your Brain is farming pretty effectively, which is nice. They're not putting pressure on him, That's, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that they chose to rotate their supports bottom, but it, it's not going to matter. They they have to make plays with this uh, with this Skyrath and Shadow Shaman. I mean, Skyrath Mage is still level one right now. Yeah, I mean, you could pull as much as you want, and that's fine. You can get experience that way. But you have a really good roaming duo, and you have boots up on PGG. You want boots first. There's no reason to go boots first unless you're getting involved in kills. I feel like for Moscow Five, and we'll yeah. have to see if they decide to go for a gank anytime soon. I, I I really do. I, I hate to say it at this point, but I really do feel like uh, M5 have about four more minutes to make something happen here in this game, or they are just going to be, they're going to be already at the point where they're on, where they're about 80, 20 underdogs. And the thing is too, it's not even like BZZ is going for your standard treads mech build. He's going for phase. When you go for phase, you want to be involved early on in the game and getting kills. The damage yep. from poison attack is ridiculous with phase boots. Oh, As yeah. a Viper player, this is one of my favorite builds and no one really does it, but... Yeah, I, I I pick Viper because I'm bad at the game, but yeah, that's exactly I mean, that's exactly right. Like this this hero, people don't realize just how badly he can just break a game at about eight minutes with this kind of a build. You start roaming and you have enough levels, and you're just gonna kill people. And, left and right look at center. this. I mean, Vigas tries for a rotation here, and just no chance. I mean, you just wrote it. You rotate out. Cedar knows this is coming. They have the wards oh, across the map. Five and, steps ahead. Yeah. And they, they do have a little two on Jadam and Yol. They're going to go back mid. They have disruption arrow combo ready. Vigas needs to be careful. He does have skewer up. He's sitting very low. That's the one thing I like about Vigas' positioning is that he's always sitting around this side of the tower. And he is able to bottle up. He does take a lot of crypt from hits. He has 13 last hits to the 37 of G. Yeah. This guy is a farming machine. Well, this is... G is, is just the kind of player that... Uh, if he gets a lead in lane, especially when, when Jotam and, and Yol are controlling the map like this, he is just one of the biggest snowball players that you'll see. He just is, is merciless in terms of just stepping on the other guy's throat. Mm -hmm. And... and... You know, it's it's just VP controlling the map so much more effectively than M5. I mean, you even look at the bottom lane there. Somehow there is 10 last hits for the Batrider. He had three a second ago. It looks like he took a jungle stack here. So that's jungle farm, by the way. And they're still looking for a uh, disruption arrow combo. And, and it's going to come out. There's the disruption coming through. There's the arrow. It does connect yeah, on Trots up top, barely. Here. Meanwhile, there is going to be a crypt Doesn't from matter. coming in PGG with the Shackle. Doesn't do anything. He get, gets the Shackle, the Aether Shot, gets the kill, but he will fall. A one for two trade. Now the Exorcism Very G is nice. running down King R. King R is like, please help somebody. He goes down. Jotam is silenced up. He is late. No, he can't get out in time. We'll go down to Shrawn. So nice rotation from Tron helps get that return kill, but a double kill coming out. That'll be the Death Prophet getting it done. G already getting his drum, and uh, he is having a heck of a game. And it, very important, though, for M5 to TP in there and try and get something done to get a kill on TPOH. You know, he's going to hit his level six now at, at at least a decent time. I mean, certainly you, you grow alarmed by how much G is just getting fed in this game. But you have to get something done there as M5. That's even though, even if you're giving up kills, you got to get levels somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... And that, that's one way to do it, but it's just, they do it so, 
ungracefully. It almost yeah. is just like, well, we're going to die, I guess. We, we might as well just TP it and get some levels out of it. Try to find something. At the very least, though, they get Batrider involved, and like you said, that's very important. He's almost level six. Right. Won't, I mean, top lane, blow your brain still forming effectively, and it looks like Yol and Jotam are going to try to rectify that. However, King R is going to be the target here. So catcher disruption, arrow connects. Yeah, King R is going to go down here. He's blocked in by the illusions of Yol. And he makes his way out of there. He dies, and Yol grabs the kill. And now yeah. blow your brain's like, I don't know if I want to be here anymore. No, no, you probably don't, big guy. You you probably want to turn that horse around and ride it right out of town. Uh, I mean, yeah, I talked about Jotam's Marana. I probably didn't, haven't given Yol enough credit. I mean, this guy, just a, a terrific, terrific support with Rock's Kiss before joining VP. And here it is again. Oof, it's the first one they've the missed. That's yeah. not an easy combo, right? And, I mean, these two are about 90% with them. They're just crazy. Blow your brain staying alive, luckily. But here comes G up in the top lane. He's got enough mana for Crypt Swarm. There's oh. the Ravish from Cedoy. They really want this kill, and they're going to fight it. But the four second stun on Cedoy, not going to save his life, though. G dominating spree at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. He has four kills. This one is assist. all but over. I mean, they, they have over a 5k gold lead here at 8.5 minute mark. Just to, Oh, wow. They get the kill on BZZ's Viper. That is mm, good for them. Yeah. I thought this game was looking like it was it was through at 8.5 minutes. That kill at least gives them something, gives them some hope. Yeah. They, they, they rotated everybody down there. They actually left Blow Your Brain up in the top lane to die and said, listen, we're going to get a kill on bottom if we... Yeah. We're going to just... We're going to force something. We're going to make it work. Now this is... You got to get some in. trade. And that that's very good awareness by them. Oh, no. Arrow. Oh, <laughs> just misses V, guys. No Ravage up. Anchor Smash coming through. They'll pull the creep wave back. And they'll take down these Serpent Wards. Won't be in deny range. BZZ TP back in as well. M5 back up smartly. Meanwhile, top lane, G gets caught out. There's going to be a level two stun or a two second stun. Drum pop, blow your brain, use Phantasm for it. Meanwhile, there's no way they can lock him down. Oh, he TPs that's out. That's actually pretty close. Yeah. So. That was a nice, nice play by Blow Your, Ra Blow Your Brain to get aggressive there. Uh, maybe a little earlier on the TP and they might have had something, but still, you know, you, you can't just sit back and get bullied like that. And I, most people are very, very reluctant to even skill, much less use level one Phantasm, but I like it here. You got to stake your claim to some territory on the map. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's really nice. I, although he doesn't get the kill out of it, he at least shows that he can he can actually fight if necessary. Right. So. And he, he CK is. Help, but. I mean, if he if you can keep him at pace on if you can keep his farming pace up, I mean, he can get some things done here when he gets drum and treads up. He can fight even before armlet, and they've kept him. You know, blow your brain. They're kind of all in on him at this point in the match. The one thing that worries me is what you talked about earlier. He has no way to flash farm oh. and, and kill creep waves like crazy, and that's the biggest issue. He has no Midas, so, I mean, he's just going to be right-clicking. And I mean, this is going to take him a while, I think, to get up even to treads. And, and, and then, God forbid, his next item is going to take even longer as well. Yeah. Whereas you have G, who's just be able to creep farm and take down Towers of Exorcism alone. Meanwhile, he'll getting caught out. Vigas is here. What's he's he going to do here? Skewer. He's not going to RP him, that's for damn sure. Disruption's going to go through Soul Catchers, where Arrow, they got round range. range. B guys is done. Nice kill. That that's that's a that's just not good awareness there because they had to know that Ravage was coming off cooldown in a couple of seconds as that fight started. PGG oh, no. is gonna go down. G does get if they get G stun, here. This could be worth it. Exorcism no, is doing work, but it is no. gonna go back and he's gonna heal up. Blow your brain's gotta get out. He's G got no it. more GD. Crip swarm. And there's the concussive shot. Just oh! misses long range. He's so fast. The speedy man on the Horse gets away. Ancient Seal G gonna have to try to TP out now. He might be able to do so. He actually has Moonlight Shadow as well. They cannot chase him. There's no detection. Um, and he will be able to get away. Although here comes Vigas. Uh oh. G looking to maybe to turn this around. Silence no comes silence. in. Yol's here as well. Disruption coming through. He'll have Skewer back into the backside here. He might use it. Looks like no. So. <laughs> All right, Vigas. Yeah. 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 We know. <laughs> Uh, that, that's going to be a big issue for them, though. Vigas's blink dagger is just going to be extraordinarily slow. Now, now TPOH has come back nicely and just did manage to complete his at, at not a terrible timing. Yeah. Uh, but they really need to be able to fight at this point with this lineup. Uh, they might give up another kill here. There's an arrow. 
Oh, just barely connecting the tail of Vigas, and this poor Magnus is like, nope, I'm not gonna be able to get another RP off. I'm gonna go down, Jotam gets the kill. Top lane, CZZ split pushing, gets lassoed in, wasn't expecting the blink dagger, Ancient Steel, and now Blow Your Brain throws up the uh, Chaos Bolt, and they just bring him down. Firefly, he does get the Viper nice. Shake off, King R is like, come on, man. He just wanted to kill for free, but no, he actually does have to take some damage. But there is now a Blink Dagger up on Sedoi, and G has his Yule Scepter, so... Even with the death of BZZ in the top lane, that doesn't give them all that much. Yeah, I, it just feels oh. like M5 is 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 kind of running out of time here. They've made some plays, and they've got the core Blink Dagger up, but they just need to make some fights happen here pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, they need to get a Blink Dagger right now in Vigas more than anything. Yule Scepter is up. Oh, he might boy. be able to scare away. Silence nope. is going to go. Oh, oh no. Vigas gets caught out. He has to right-click G down, but does nothing really to him. So G is just starting to obliterate the enemy team. He's almost level 12 mid lane. They disrupt Arrow on poor Tron, who just got his Blink Dagger. He gets caught out of position, and BZZ gets a revenge kill coming in, as he's got his Point Booster now as well. Oh, boy. I mean, and really, so much of this was created by that early courier kill, just throwing off Vegas's ability to compete in lane, and, and, you know, it goes in both directions. G, one of the biggest snowball players out there. Now, yeah. exorcism, demonic purge, PGG, come on, man, no, you can't be there, silence is up, wicked sick for G. He takes a lot of damage from a concussive shot, taking tower hits as well, Mystic Flare, oh. the Yule Scepter coming out, what a play, and King R is gonna fall, double kill G, unbelievable. Scarif uh, actually disconnects. That's unfortunate. And I hope that's not... I, he actually used his Mystic Flare, then ran at G. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, it looked like he might have time to get one spell off, but no, that was that was a heck of a sequence there by G. That Yule Scepter, though, just great timing, honestly. G has been playing out of his mind. He's zero deaths in the game. He's got 1,700 gold, and he'll look to take a Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. It's 13 minutes in, and I don't think I've ever seen British Pro this ahead, this early on. And oh, it's exciting I, to see. I have. I mean, that, that's kind of their mo that uh, they get G a lead in lane with uh, with Jotam and Yol, and uh, he's just about unstoppable. I mean, this yeah. is this is how they've been playing lately. And uh, again, I, I brought it up early on, but I just can't overstate having a couple of extremely talented and stable supports like this when you have a potentially explosive mid player like G. It, it, that combination. Right. Is one of the more powerful personnel combinations in Dota. Yeah, this is just. I, I, I don't want to say this is an outdraft, but that's what it's feeling right like right now for Virtus Pro versus M5. The game's certainly not over, but I, I don't know that they, they're starting to lose all of their towers. They're starting to lose all of their heroes. More importantly, Blue Your Brain yeah. can barely get anything on the map. He hasn't even finished his trades yet before he's picking up his ogre club and trying to build into that BKB. So. I mean, when we talk about an outdraft, I, I don't necessarily know that on paper the five VP heroes are that much better than them. Five probably is a bit of one. But when you factor in the fact that VP has just been playing so well in the laning phase recently and M5 has been up and down, to me, you can't, you can't draft yourself a lineup as M5 that puts this much pressure on you this early in the game. And uh, we're gonna try uh, to find yeah, something. Disruption, great, coming out from Tron. They're on Yol, excuse me. They will use the Mystic Flare, they drag him out of it. Meanwhile, Magnus has already died. Blink Ravage, Yol is still alive somehow. King R, Starstorm, Crypt Swarm. G is godlike. Blow your brain, pops the Phantasm. They anchor smash him. Meanwhile, BZZ blows up the poor Shadow Shaman. Blow your brain, getting caught out. Looks this like he's gonna five. be Dunzo. McDunzo, that's gonna be a five man wipe. Double kill for G. And VP are running over Moscow 5. Holy crap. Yeah, they, they might call this soon. That was unbelievable. I, I, they just did everything right in that fight. And you saw Blow Your Brain. I mean, he has not had a bad game. And he hung in there and tried to do some things. But yeah, I'm going to call it right here. I don't blame them one single bit. VP just pushed every button correctly in this match. And, and M5 just really never had a chance. I, I think that... We do have another game here, and yes. I, I think that M5 can really contend with VP, but they need to put themselves in a better position in the laning phase. Look for them in the next match to come out really strong in the first seven to eight minutes. Yeah, absolutely, and and I think if I've got to get something going in the next game, again, you don't want to be able to lose this series 2-0, and this is something that Virtus Pro played a heck
heck of a game, but you cannot let them get those series. You cannot let them run off to that fast start. We'll see if they can tie it up here in the next game. Of course, it is a best of two series between Virtus Pro and Moscow 5. Afterwards, we'll have Evil Geniuses versus Moscow 5 as well. And this is Group A. Moscow 5 with a lot of games today. We'll see if they can get things back on track, guys. Stick around. We'll be back with game number two in just a bit.